Microsoft has been working on AI for decades, and chatbots actually aren't anything new. But all of a sudden, everyone is salivating. Why do you think the moment for AI is now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually, you're absolutely right, which is AI has been here, f in fact, it's mainstream, right? I mean, search is an AI product, even the current generation of search. Every news aggregation, recommendation, and, you know, YouTube or e-commerce or TikTok are all AI products, uh, except they're all, I would say, today's generation of AI is all autopilot. Uh, in fact, it's a black box that we just sort of use uh, uh, that is dictating, in fact, how our attention is focused. Whereas going forward, the thing that's most exciting about this generation of AI is perhaps we move from autopilot to copilot, where we actually prompt it. I mean, think about it, right? What we, we are learning to program AI as with just natural language. Right, and it gets smarter every it, time you use it. You, yeah, yeah, and also you are l making it, it's, a, it's ultimately a stochastic machine that you're using as a tool to help reason about mm -hmm. what you're learning, what you're creating, what you're doing. And so yes, I think this, uh, this shift from autopilot to copilot is actually, yes, the next phase of AI, which in fact is perhaps going to put us as humans you know, more in the center of using AI to our benefit. With Copilot, you are deeply weaving LLMs across all of Microsoft's products, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. You're also basically giving folks their own personal business chatbot. How transformative a change do you think this will be in how we work? Yeah, to me, that, that, that is it, right? Having built now, GitHub Copilot, having built the web Copilot with Bing, th uh, and even what we did with Dynamic, this is the big next step for us, to put it in the tools everybody uses every day for their work. I think it does three things, Emily. For me, you know, one of the things that I've always said is, God, there's so much functionality in Word or Excel and PowerPoint. How do we make it such that people use this in powerful ways mm -hmm. to create great content, great documents, great PowerPoint art, learn how to do analysis that's pretty sophisticated. In an interesting way now, without having to say, let me learn all the commanding of Office, I just literally can use natural language. So the power of 30 plus years of Office creation uh, the, the sophistication of these tools is just available to every user. Same thing with even Teams mm -hmm. and Teams Copilot. Like, think about how meetings can be more effective with the Teams Copilot. But I think that probably the biggest difference maker will be business chat. Because mm -hmm. if you think about the most important database in any company is the database underneath all of your productivity software. Except that data is all siloed today. But now I can query it with natural. I can say, oh, I'm going to meet this customer. Can you tell me the last time I met them? Can you bring up all the documents that are written up about this customer and summarize it so that I'm current on what I need to be prepped for? Mm -hmm. That ability to interrogate that database, query it, and do it without learning some new syntax of querying language, but just natural language, is just super powerful. How do you make sure it's not Clippy 2.0? That it is. <laughs> Helpful, delightful, doesn't want to make me click out ASAP. <laughs> there are two sets of things. One is, you know... You're laughing because... Because look, they're, 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 like, our industry is full of lots of you know, examples from Clippy to even like say current generation of these assistants and so on. They all are brittle. I think there are two things that this generation of AI uh, do. One is when we say they understand natural language, they truly understand natural language. We are also going to have to learn that ultimately these are tools, they're stochastic in nature. Just like any time somebody sends me a draft, I review the draft, I just don't accept the draft. <laughs> We will do that. Like, interestingly enough, we learned a lot in GitHub Copilot. In fact, the day, first time when GitHub Copilot came, you know, even software developers saying, oh, yeah, this does make mistakes. Yeah. Except in even a few months, people said, oh, yeah, but I know how to correct those mistakes. Uh, and so that ability to work with this Copilot, uh, give it feedback, know how to verify it, even this chain of thought reasoning in Excel, like the one feature, I don't know if you saw this, but that was very cool, which is we said, okay, what's the design choice we can make so that users get in the habit of not just accepting whatever AI is saying, 
but even ask it to show you its scratch pad work. Right. Uh, it's like literally like inspecting somebody's homework, right? Which is, hey, tell me exactly how you did this and so that I can verify. Those are the kinds of things that we'll learn. In my decade plus covering Microsoft, I can't remember you releasing this much in quick succession. Why is it all happening so fast? Yeah, it's, you know, it's sort of sometimes it feels it's all happening fast. It's, we, we started working on this, you know, a good four years ago, right? I mean, in some sense, if you think about when OpenAI and Microsoft came together and said, hey, this next generation of large language models uh, need new infrastructure. Let's build the infrastructure, tune the infrastructure. Uh, let's understand even what AI safety and alignment looks like for these. What are the use cases? And this has been four years plus in making. Yeah. So once we started seeing the scaling effects, the promise of the emergent capabilities even uh, that started showing up in these large language models, that's why last year's, in fact, the, perhaps for me, uh, the application of these large language models inside of GitHub Copilot was the big, it's the biggest LLM product out there today. Yeah. Um, and so that gave us confidence that, hey, we now can apply it in more context. So yes, it feels that we launched a lot of things just in a hurry this year, but it's been four years in the making, and obviously it's a, it's a great partnership with OpenAI.